I'm about 40 minutes out of the downtown uh, just to get a bit of an idea of how everything looks and it's pretty much still a city um, apart from like over the other side of the water where it's like a little bit greener and a little bit more uh, rural it still feels like a city I've got a lot of work to do G'day guys, Tills20 here and welcome back to Sichuan Province. I'm going to talk a little bit about the music on my channel for the first little bit of this episode and then we'll start talking about the builds, but I just wanted to talk a bit about the music first up. So when I develop a new series, I actually spend quite a long time thinking about the theme and the ideas behind that series and a lot of that is also based on the music that I'll be playing because I think that music and sound has a really big um, impact and a really big um, important role within these videos and I um, you know I'm quite a music buff I you know wants to sort of have an experience for each one of my series and um, you'll probably notice that none of my series share the same music so Marlon Mountain has its own playlist when I did um, Springwood that was all based in the 80s so all the music was in the 80s Border Town had a bit more of a Mexican country music vibe to it with a bit of hip-hop too and then for Sichuan Province, I probably spent the most amount of time trying to find the right soundtrack. And that's because the type of sound that I wanted is I, I wanted this very dreamlike orchestral music that made you feel quite inspired or um, this a bit of a sense of wonder because that is the way that I feel when I travel in China. It's, I feel very inspired and I'm very much wowed by everything that I see. So that's the sort of music that I chose. I was really lucky to find, it took me ages to find him, but I chose this artist, um, Trevor Kowalski. And there's a couple of other artists in there too, but if you are interested in listening to that soundtrack, I've put together a YouTube playlist in the description below. You can check out all the music that is in this series and more, because there's actually a whole bunch of music that I didn't end up choosing, just didn't fit in with commentary and um, cinematics and all that. You should check it out. I think it's really, really beautiful music. I listen to it all the time. Um, it's probably my favorite music as part of my series, um, but, I also, but I also have made one for Marble Mountain too because a couple of people were wondering what music I use. I download all my music from a website called Epidemic Sound, which is a um, paid subscription. I get royalty free music and that's basically where I get my music from. And I'm pretty sure most of that music is on YouTube as well. So I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you do end up listening to that soundtrack. I really, really enjoy it. In terms of what I'm doing in today's episode, so, so far I've just been working on the road layouts of this area and placing down a whole bunch of buildings. Now, let me give a bit of explanation for this area. This is like the outskirts of the city. This is only going to get as much attention as you are seeing right now. I actually wasn't going to include this um, footage in the time lapse, but I thought, you know what, this is like going to give you a good idea of what I do for the outskirts of the city. Uh, because I do want this to like be a massive city and I do want it to feel like it just goes on and on. Because when you do look out um, in Chongqing, like the actual city that's based on, uh, it just goes on forever. And even like going to that little, um, that like outskirt area of the city, it still felt like very much a city with the big skyscrapers and um, massive apartment blocks and the density of it. Yeah, not like at no point do you ever feel like you're out of the downtown or out of the city. So um, I did want to give that impression in um, this city as well. I wanted it to feel like it just continues to like expand and go on. And this is also a great way to in um, increase population. So everything that I'm doing is like just so quick. Um, it's just like very in and out. Um, doing a lot of copying and pasting, a lot of um, pre-built parks and like absolutely no detail at all. It looks awful, but it really serves a good purpose of um, just getting the bulk of the population down and uh, it also makes for like a really nice look for when you are looking from like a more detailed area like the downtown or even that interchange that we built in the last episode. 
When you look in this direction, the city doesn't just end. It looks like it just continues to expand, which is what I wanted. So very little detail um, on the very outskirts of this, of the area that I just built. I just placed down a whole bunch of factories because uh, that like a lot of industry is sort of based around the outskirts of the city and uh, that sort of that sort of shows where the boundaries of the city are. So I didn't mind that they were sitting on the outskirts and then um, also just changed a little bit of the ground texture too, just using the uh, resources paint tool, um, which then makes it look a little bit more, looks a little bit more like it is um, like farmland and stuff. So yeah, just like some little techniques that I plan to do um, further on in this series when we, um, you know, work in some other areas. If you um, all of a sudden see the population just rise suddenly, <laughs> or if you um, you see a whole bunch of city just being built, you know that's the technique that I'm going for, which is big builds. Um, and there's also a train line that I um, moved out that way too. I don't plan on detailing that train line. That is um, purely just there to get people from that area um, over to the city with more ease. Um, now I'm starting to work on this um, interchange, which is going to be like the bulk of the episode. So I worked on one of these in the last episode and I think I probably do a much better job at um, actually using these tools than in the last one. The last one was very um, quick and I didn't really know what I was doing, but you can probably tell on this one, I've got, I have a little bit more of an understanding of how to use these um, roads. So this is a CSUR mod. This was um, created by a Mamlia and some other guys that I still can't remember who did it, but far out, this is um, a pretty insane mod. Um, if you have used it, let me know. I would love to see other people using it too because I haven't seen too many other uh, screenshots or videos of people using this mod. And again, I don't do a good job at giving you a tutorial on how to use it. This is more just um, seeing how you can actually create some roads. Uh, this road in particular though, this is um, inspired by a uh, bridge. Um, bridge interchange that I flew my drone over in Chongqing. This, um, this is actually a pretty famous area of Chongqing, uh, this whole intersection. I'm not, this guy's not an intersection, it's like an interchange. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're probably the same thing. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I had the pleasure of having a taxi ride up one of these ramps and it's just pretty insane. Uh, the, the height of these things, I don't think the drone does it justice to show um, how high up these are. Um, I actually plan to do this in another area, but I just sort of happened to make it in this spot. It just sort of worked. So yeah, pretty um, pretty high up ramps, but they look pretty cool and they're kind of realistic. I mean, a lot of the things that you see me build, you, you must be thinking, uh, that doesn't look right. Like nowhere in the world has something like that. Well, China has some pretty insane intersections that um, are only made possible with a mod like this. I won't do every single intersection with as much detail um, as this one. There are um, a couple of ones that I'm really particularly looking forward to building, but uh, I don't know, I didn't expect to even build this one. I was um, only planning on sort of expanding out a, um, you know, a portion of what I just built in that before bit, um, you know, that massive big expansion. But then I was like, you know what, there's a lot of people living out this way. I think we're going to need something that's going to get people to the city and to the downtown with a little bit more ease. So that's why I ended up just building. I was like, stuff it, let's just build this damn thing. And yeah, it wasn't too bad, but there's only so much I could probably build. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole bunch I really want to do. There's a um, there's a few in the downtown that I think I will probably tackle maybe in the next couple of episodes. I might get to those ones. Um, while the, the skills of this mod are still fresh in my brain, I can actually tackle them. And then, um, yeah, and then we'll probably move on to some other things. Um, let me know what you um, are excited to see in this series. Like, what, what are you most looking forward to me building? Um, I know I asked the question in the last episode uh, whether you think I should build uh, the largest city, so the largest building in this city to be um, under construction. And it was, very, uh, it was a very big, overwhelming yes. So that is definitely something we're going to be doing, which I'm really glad because that's something I wanted to do. Um, I'm just going to figure out how the hell I'm going to make it. If you've got any ideas of how to do that, just um, let me know and point me in the right direction. But I think it'll probably be a mixture of like a pre-built building and then I will probably just um, put a whole bunch of props on it and I'll probably have to look at how they have cranes on buildings like that because, I don't know, they must just be sitting on top of the building or something. I don't really know. I have to look at some pictures. 
Uh, actually, I took some videos of um, some buildings being under construction, and they're pretty large, so maybe maybe they'll be good sources of inspiration. I'll have to go through my files after this after this build. But the next episode, we'll probably be um, expanding out this area just a little bit more because I do want to finish it off and then move on to the downtown and start expanding out that area. There's a whole bunch of areas I'm pretty keen to build. But um, next episode is actually going to... So next week, instead, we'll be doing um, Back to Marble Mountain and Sichuan Province will be back um, probably in the next couple of weeks or so. But you can see I've pretty much finished the general layout of this intersection and now I'm just sort of... Uh, you know, just reshuffling, you know, making things look a little bit more seamless, uh, a little bit smoother than they did before because um, I was really just aimed, the, the whole build was aimed at me just like um, building and getting the nodes all connected and then then when they were all connected up, then I can start using Mobits to, um, you know, make things look a little bit better. This area that I'm working on right now, so this is, I had a bit of trouble at this area because uh, I wanted this one ramp to connect back up to the to the main road here and originally the Amamlia pack with um, like before the CSUR mod pack the um, yeah you couldn't actually have single ramps connected to a road like this uh, so I didn't know whether this was going to be possible with this um, this more recent edition of the pack but I actually managed managed to make it work which I was really happy about um, so basically the problem was Originally, you couldn't have single uh, single ramps connected to a road like this, um, but now you actually can, which is really, really good. It makes it really useful. Um, it's a bit tricky to figure out how to do that, and again, I don't think I could actually explain it. Uh, instead, you should go and check out the actual um, video tutorial by Mamlia, who does a really good job at showing how all the roads connect up. But yeah, this works pretty well, and when you see the traffic flowing on this thing, Oh man, it's, it's very, it's very nice. I ended up taking some extra cinematics, so if you want to check them out, they, um, they're at the very end of the episode. But um, they look, they look quite nice because um, all the traffic is just flowing and it's all smooth and um, nothing's, nothing's freaking out or glitching out, which is good. Um, and that was sort of the whole reason why I ended up deciding to build an actual um, big custom intersection in this area is because there's a fair bit of traffic. There's a fair bit of traffic in this spot. I um, ended up probably creating about, I don't know, I increased the population by about 20,000 um, just with the outskirts of this part. That's a fair bit. That's, that's a lot. That's pretty much like the entire population of Marble Mountain. So uh, that's a fair amount of people. So you can sort of see the purpose of an intersection like this. Um, we really needed some something pretty decent to get people around and flowing and uh, yeah. Otherwise, because I mean the whole purpose of this series is much as me trying to make things uh, interesting and uh, you know based on a Chinese CDA also wants all the traffic to be flowing seamlessly and this area works pretty well and I'm quite happy that it does and you can actually see me starting to get the traffic flowing you can um, I'm starting to use the traffic president mods just to connect up some of the uh, intersections that are uh, not really connected up or doing some weeds um, glitchy things so um, yeah that's um, working much better um, and now the detail work which is always um, I think the way more fun part of this um, part of these builds I really hate putting together these intersections like I, I really do <laughs> but um, I think like the payoffs quite big uh, it's the sort of thing where you build it and you're going like oh this is like killing me why why can't you connect please just work and then you finally do it and then when you start detailing it and making everything look pretty nice, you go like, yeah, that was worth it. What was I complaining about? It was totally fine. It was easy. No problem at all. <laughs> yeah, but really, it was awful. Uh, again, though, the mod's, mod's really, really good. I highly recommend it. Uh, so, in terms of the detail work, I am taking a lot of inspiration from that fly that I did on the outskirts of the city. I have no idea what this place was called, I just sort of got a taxi there, pretty much pointed to it on the map and he took me there. But um, I thought that this, this, um, this key was like a nice addition and it's pretty similar to the one that I flew my drone off as well. Uh, something that I'm going to be doing in the next episode is I'm going to be placing the monorail line um, across the bridge because this was something that was um, around this area and uh, yeah, I think it's going to make a really, really cool addition. So yeah, you can expect that in the next episode. 
but this whole area was so bizarre. It was like a really, I don't know, it was very desolate. Like there weren't that many people around. Um, a lot of buildings, like a lot of people would live around here, but there weren't very many people. Like some people took some interest with the drone that I was flying around. I thought they were going to get me in trouble, but then they were like just super interested and keen. So, and that's generally the case to be honest. I always think that someone's going to get me in trouble or tell me that I can't fly there. And then they always come up and like, oh yeah, this is awesome. And I'm like, yeah, cool. <laughs> like, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, so that was, um, that was a big relief. So I'm, I am actually basing a lot of this area um, off the area that I flew in, except this this um, factory that I'm placing in. So this is a vanilla factory, but man, it, it fits in with the scene pretty well. Uh, I believe this might be the soda factory, but that could be wrong. It's, um, yeah, but it's from the Industries DLC, and I'm going to be using a lot of these buildings throughout this series, because there's a lot of factories in China, um, particularly around the city, which is kind of, um, yeah, works well for me. So I thought this place would be a mix of, uh, like not really any commercial, it's going to be mostly office blocks, factories, and then we will place down some apartment buildings around the coastline too. Uh, you'll see me do that in a little, little, in just a little bit. But again, I guess in terms of like the detail work, it's probably like, it's definitely not the highest of detailed. It's more of a, on the fringes of the city, and there's still like a bit of detail, like them placing down some trees with a bit more, um, a bit more effect than I was in the other areas. And... Yeah, a bit of a park too, but, you know, I'm not putting down any decals or uh, making sure that everything's totally aligned. It's probably a little bit more, a bit more loosey-goosey than, um, you know, the downtown area. But I did think this would be a good spot for a park, which is pretty similar to the area that I flew in. And, yeah, again, lots of bushes, making sure that this place is pretty well covered with foliage because, man... Chongqing is just full of foliage, so I thought that this would make a good addition. Guys, that is it for this episode. That wrapped up much faster than I expected. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think, and um, again, let me know what you want, what you're dying to see in this series, what you want me to work on and build in the next few episodes, because I will be taking a quick little break while I work on some Marble Mountain stuff, and then we'll be back in Sidon Province building some big, big stuff. All right, dudes, thank you so much for watching this episode. Much appreciated. Hope you have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.